out of this today. They're estimating that it has doubled to over 120,000 people thought to have died while waiting for treatment in the past year. If true, and we're going to be talking to Emily Thornberry after nine o'clock, uh, an absolutely terribly shameful uh, figure. Alice Denby was on in our six o'clock hour, deputy editor of CapEx, uh, in the studio now. And um, you made a lot of very good points, Alice, which people are agreeing with. Let me just give you an example of some of them here. Um, the, Sean saying the current NHS model uh, is uh, means that we are a second-rate country. It's time to retire this business model. Um, Duncan tells a story about basically he was to have a hand operation, but he just gave up the will to live, basically, uh, because he had so many phone calls, six phone calls, to assess his suitability to have surgery, and it led to a delay of more than 10 weeks. And then we get all the attacks on management, uh, people saying privatise all the management within the NHS, might be a good idea or a bad idea, I'm not really sure about that. And it goes on and on. Uh, a lot of people uh, feel threatened that their NHS, they feel that people from outside the country are overpowering the NHS. Uh, Katie says uh, the country's infrastructure and our way of living isn't suitable for such a large population. Uh, this is why we're in crisis in all aspects of life. But basically, people are worried about their NHS and they think the model is not fit for current life. I think that's really encouraging to hear from your viewers, actually, because so often we talk about the NHS in Britain as reflecting British values, as being kind of essential to, to the nature of this country. And I think that's such a parochial and, and impractical view. If you look at other countries, they still have uh, free at the point of use healthcare with much better access and much better outcomes. And, and your viewers here are talking about the human cost of this broken model. Um, and people just can't get the healthcare they need. And that, that is not a case of just waiting lists. It's a question of a broken, broken system. And, and a huge embarrassment for the Prime Minister, who said one of his big targets was to cut waiting lists. They've actually got worse under his stewardship. More than half of the people who died in this country last year we're on a waiting list. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, it's very embarrassing. And the waiting list has gone up even since Rishi Sunak made it one of his five pledges to bring it down. I do think we need to be slightly cautious of these Labour figures, because um, uh, uh, given that the waiting list has gone up, you would expect, therefore, the number of died. Well, the NHS England data anyway. shows waiting lists have got bigger since the Prime Minister made his pledge. 7.5 million in May, up to 7.6 million in June. Yeah, absolutely. There's no denying that this waiting list has gone up, and as a consequence, more people are dying. Um, it's very embarrassing for the Prime Minister, but I, I, I do feel like Labour making um, capital out of this, um, you know, you know they, they have questions to answer here too. If they're going to be in government the next time, they need to address how they are going to fix this, not just criticising this government, but saying, what are you going to do? Uh, what, you know, one of the big drivers of these increased waiting lists is what happened during COVID and the strikes. And Labour have not really differed much from the Conservatives on, on either of those policies or on, on strikes. Yeah. They've, you know, they've said they're not going to capitulate to the pay demands. But they said they're going to solve it just by being a bit nicer to the unions. I mean, it's not really good well, enough. Emily Thornbury after nine o'clock on that one. But Alice, what a story in the um, in the mirror today. Um, I don't know if you can just, just see this, but it says, uh, exposed Nightingale scandal beds in the unused Nightingale hospitals. And there were six of them set up around the country are being sold for six quid. Unbelievable. Six quid. Let's what, try what and do that story in the papers, actually. Can we get that um, in our next paper yeah. segment, our production? What, what, what a disaster yeah. that is. I mean, these were centres in East London, Birmingham, Manchester, Harrogate, Sunderland, Bristol and Exeter. 530 million quid spent on that. Oh and practically nobody treated within them. I just could never understand mm -hmm. why they weren't brought into action. And they were talking about um, the pressure uh, staff were facing in hospitals. There was all this sitting there ready to take it's up the they slack. can't get the staff. I think it's, as you say, I think it's because they simply couldn't get the staff. The staff were working in, you know, normal hospitals. Um, and it does feel like this Nightingale Hospital is quite a sort of aesthetic move. It was the government saying, look, we're doing stuff. Here's Matt Hancock um, setting up these hospitals. And, and as you say, they, they turned out to be useless. So you can get a bed that was £2,300 with all the gizmos and gadgets on it, whatever thing, six quid. 
Well, there's one at seven quid, slightly more expensive. But uh, there we go. Absolutely scandalous. Yeah, it does seem baffling when one of the biggest problems hospitals have is not enough beds and not being able to get people out of beds into social well, care. Well, if there are so some on. savvy hospital managers, they'll get on those auction sites and buy up some of the beds. <laughs> um, Alice Denby, always a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed.